I mean, it's unfortunate anytime you have a brother that can, uh, you know, that's hurt. Um, obviously, he played his game and injuries are a part of it. And it just sucks for him. He's been having a pretty good uh, training camp. And he's really been taking that next step. So for him, uh, it's, a, it's a, probably a little annoying. But at the same time, that's why you got depth. And we have that. Obviously, I have to so out. I mean, I think it's an opportunity, you know, uh, for, for all of us. You know, obviously for him it's big, but, you know, they always say in the league, you know, you're one injury away from starting and then you're one injury away from being in rotation, right? That's the type of situation that I'm in or whoever coaches the side of the So, you know, I think the biggest thing is, you know, for him is this attention detail and this step learning curve because coming into the NBA, there is a learning curve and he's still trying to get there. Okay, uh, they always talk about like a West Coast trip or a long trip can help galvanize the team, but this was to the extreme where you go that far. What was the biggest thing you kind of took away from a, a, group, a group bonding perspective? Uh, you know, you know we, got, we, got, we got really good chemistry right now. So I think for, for that standpoint, being overseas, being together was good for us. We all went to dinners, obviously, being in a different country, not knowing the language. A lot of us are tied together more nationally, but... Uh, no, I think for the most part, especially if you look at that last game for those three quarters, you know, we were clicking, we felt good, uh, you know, playing the right way, defense, you know, still got ways to go, but uh, I think everything from that trip, collectively from the team, was uh, trending positive, so. What do you think about the post performer in the current Oh, that's my God. Uh, yeah, no, for sure. I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't exactly know he was going to uh, pull up in Obviously with teammates, but uh, I mean, no, yeah, 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 for sure. Um, you know, I think it was great for Rui to be in Japan to play on his home crowd, and you know, we got him in there for a lot of minutes, uh, allowed his home crowd to see him and him, and I think that was really important. And I think it was great for his confidence too. You know, to think about him. He, he had an up and down year last year, uh, came in halfway, and I bet to start the season off playing in front of his home crowd really gave him that confidence. Too. So I think it was great for him. Um, I do, you know, I think, um, you know, it just all depends on uh, the matchup also and uh, how we are uh, the same at the same time. You know, obviously we're both good guys. I, I, I'm sure we've got to play the coach too, but, um, you know, if we can defend, then it doesn't matter that much. Uh, I think you know, there's a lot of variables, but, uh, you know, coach is like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you more comfortable playing the I just have an advantage on force. Um, you know, typically fours are, are used to guard guys uh, uh, of my skill set from the standpoint of being able to uh, you know, play pick and roll or grab it off the rim and have to, to match up with me. Uh, attacking the uh, you know, defending the, at, at that spot. So, you know, this is a very good guy. You seem to do a lot of passing on the move. Yeah. Like in the first game, you spend the pass. What's kind of your approach in that regard? And, and is it, do you have to work on like throwing up passes accurately because you are? Um, you know, I think uh, I just I just played against basketball the right way. I try to uh, the right pass here, and the right play here. I try to make it.
Oh, uh, yeah, it's been real good. Um, it's good to always have, you know, somebody that's been, you know, from the past team stuff to come in and just give as much experience about the game as possible, you know. And I'm soaking as much wisdom up as I possibly can because, as everybody knows, he was one, you know, one of the guys that was here that was dominant when John was here, you know, when Brad was in his young years and whatnot. So it's all good, you know. I'm really enjoying the time to being around him. You know, it's always good to be around somebody that got a screen named after them. I was going to say, was that the main focus? Talk yeah. It was the main focus at the end of practice today. Mainly, you know, most of the workouts and stuff that I've been really just talking to him with and stuff like that, so on and so forth, is just like, you know, shooting the ball a little bit more with my offhand, you know, setting screens, a lot of getting guys open, running the floor, just being a dominant big on the floor mainly. The main thing. Yes, yeah, so he taught you the, the Gore taught screen. Yeah, yes. You know, I've, they've always, you know, we've always worked on it time and time again throughout, you know, the time that I've been here, ever since I've got here and stuff. But, you know, to actually have, you know, the person come here and teach it, you know, it's something it's something that you really want to, you know, have in your back pocket for sure. You know, he taught me a lot of stuff today with the Gortat screen. So I'm probably going to try to use it throughout the season for sure. He's a heftier guy than you. Do you talk about how to use your size maybe effectively? Or what's that like working with a kind of weightier big, I guess? Um, my thing, you know, he from... You know, he's a foreign guy, you know, big guy, of course. Uh, <laughs> so he's going to talk about, you know, how I need to, you know, add size and whatnot. But at the same time, you know, it's good for, you know, a guy like me, especially like my size, to be able to learn the things like that because I can do that too. You know, set the Gortat screen and so on and so forth. Man, still catch lobs and whatnot too. So it'll all be good. You know, I'm still working on the size thing, of course. You know, that comes with the working stuff in the weight room. But at the same time, you know, it's always good that a versatile guy like me can – be able to set screens like I used to set screens, really. To get guys open, like Brad getting them down, he'll get them to the basket wide open layups. That'll, you know, that'll sooner or later open up the floor to where guys will come in, help off. We got we got spray out threes, you know, that'll make open baskets for me, open baskets for Brad. It's just like, you know, a domino effect, basically. When walking through it at the end with Brad also there, I guess, how does that just help? Okay, well, this is exactly what I need to be setting it for. Can you give me input as well? Uh, that's, communication is key. You know, you can't go wrong without, with, you know, talking about certain scenarios and how this will play out and how that will play out. It's always good. So it was real good for me because it's always already has me thinking on it even before I even walked off the floor today. It's something that I'm really going to keep in my back pocket to where I can try to learn day in, day out, get film on it, figure it out, watch the highlights of Gortat, of course, and how the things that he used to do with John, with Brad, so on and so forth. That's, that's the type of stuff that will help me out for sure because it's going to be successful. Uh, you get over there. Ah, I spent it with uh, my wife, of course. We had a real good time. We enjoyed it. Uh, we did a couple. We did a couple of things. We went out for ramen. Of course, she bought me a bunch of anime stuff. I didn't really get a chance to go to any anime oh. stores. It's a bummer, I know. Um, but all in all, you know, I really enjoyed it. Just being able to spend my birthday in a whole another part of the world is something that a kid could dream of. You know, you could ask me at 15 if I would ever thought I would have been in Japan on my birthday. I would have told you no. <laughs> How would you uh, grade the dinner that Rui organized? I was good. I liked it a lot. It was it was a different variety of foods that was brought out in the hibachi, uh, hibachi restaurant that uh, we went to. You know, um, it was a bit different when it came to sauce and stuff. I'm a bit, I'm a bit more of a saucy guy and then a sweet guy. So on, uh, other than that, it was great. You know, I really not don't complain about food. So <laughs> I wanted to get back to screen because we talked about a lot. Mm -hmm. Is it harder for you to know how to screen or like when to screen in the office? I say how to screen because you know you know when to screen because if a guy tells you to come up the screen, if you know when to screen during like in a certain point of the shot clock, I say how to screen because you know it's a lot of de it's a lot of real versatile defensive guys in this league. You know they're quick, they slide their feet well, and there's a lot of strong defensive guys at point guard too that are guarding. You know most of the time, the guard that is coming to receive the screen, whatever. So when it comes to that, guys are slipping under the screens. You know, getting over the screen. You got to make sure you get guys off of the ball handler just so they can get downhill on the screen, so on and so forth. Because the more you can get the ball handle open, the more it'll be better for you. Because then X5 is going to have to make a decision certain, you know, times down the floor whenever it comes to me setting the right screen or the wrong screen. Is it more about body positioning or like the angles of the screens? I would say it's a little bit of both, you know, depending on what part of the floor you're on. Depending on if you're coming from the bottom or the top, you know, you always got to get that right angle to make sure we can get a guy, you know, over the top, downhill every time. You had some uh, nice assists in those first two preseason mm -hmm. games. Has passing been a big emphasis for you? Yes. Um, today, just like well, what Coach was talking to me about, just really just keeping my boys at the top of the floor. 
you know, it's a lot of the times where I've been seeing myself on film and whatnot, you know, getting the ball ripped for me or guys being over aggressive when it comes to me having the ball up top and stuff. So being able to really just withstand that pressure, defensive pressure, and just holding my poise in certain situations like that is what helped me, you know, make those passes. And just really just having the confidence to make those passes. You know, once we we have the right offense to where it set up those passes and the back cuts and stuff, and I get and it gets guys open, so gotta hit them. Uh, shortly after the injury, um, I could just tell by his reaction that it was something pretty significant. Um, then, in, then he started to swell up pretty good you know, within a matter of minutes. So, you know, that obviously, his body's way of protecting itself. So, um, he had quite a bit of swelling. They treated it uh, several times. He had plenty of time on the flight to treat it. Put him in a boot for cautionary reasons. He um, says he's you know progressing better than he thought as of this morning. And I know he's going to, it'll be some time before we get him back into live action, but he seems to be in good spirits and you know, hopefully on the right track. When you say they treated it multiple times, is that just icing or? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they've got all the, the bells and whistles, icing, um, you know, electric stem, the, um, the circulation um, boots and pads they have. Um, you know, on a long flight like that, you really have to make sure to stay on top of it so you don't uh, add to the increased swelling. What does this open the door for? Uh, well, you know, Danny will be working his way back in, but it's minutes for uh, for Johnny, minutes for Will. Um, you know, Brad's going to play his his normal his normal minutes, but uh, Corey at the three, two, two, three, however you want to look at it, uh, we have bodies to fill that spot. Johnny, by the time the season starts, will Johnny be ready to play um, minutes in a in competitive games and close games? At, at, on the uh, it's tough for me to say right now. I hope so. Um, I think just an opportunity for him uh, to kind of step into a role. I mean, we talked about it preseason, you know, the way our depth have, is, is laid out. Uh, it's, it's tough to kind of pencil in a lot of minutes for a young player right now. Uh, and so he's going to have opportunity and hopefully he takes full up, uh, advantage of that opportunity, much like the way Corey did last year. I know he played a position that's pretty foreign to him now. But how, other than that, how has he looked? How did he look in those two preseason games? Well, you know, he, he, he struggled. And honestly, it's I'm not surprised because I put him in a point guard's position that he's never played. And I did that intentionally to see how he would handle it. And, um, you know, the, the group, not, not just himself, but uh, you'll be playing with three bigs out there. It's, it's not an ideal pairing. Uh, so it, it, it was uh, touch and go, which I expected. So, and I told him, I said, I put you in a disadvantaged position, and I wanted to see how you would do. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not concerned about the result, because I've, uh, I've, se I've seen him play well in different stretches. I've seen him have great practices. So, I'm not overreacting to, to you know, that window, that seven-minute window. Um, it was just kind of a, an opportunity for me to put him in a tough spot and see how he responded. Is Denny making progress? Denny is making progress. He was a uh, partial participant today. I'm uh, still, you know, uh, in a ramp up phase. Um, uh, doubtful, in my opinion, right now for Charlotte. And uh, hopefully for uh, you know, the last preseason game. Uh, 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 no, no, no. It was just the, uh, the, the drill stuff and the shooting. Uh, we were able to get up and down quite a bit today, but none of the competitive stuff. Do you expect that you would be able to do live stuff in the next uh, I hope so. I honestly don't know at this point. We'll see how he responds, but I anticipate as he ramps up, you know, be a little bit more each day. On Corey, did get any MRI or did you guys rule out a high equal strain? Yeah, he did it all. Uh, he did MRI, X-ray, the whole nine, and, and he pretty much checked out as a as a strain. Um, I'm not going to give it a medical diagnosis, but um, it's pretty significant in my opinion. Um, so I think it's just more get the swelling down and then see how we can. Uh, ramp him back up. As he kind of goes through treatment, will he be around the practice facility at all, or is he just kind of... Like, no, no, he'll be around. Here, yeah. yeah, yeah, he'll do it here. Um, I think it's, you know, important, this, this being training camp, as we continue to implement, you know, he won't be a part of the drills, but just kind of watch and the learning and the teaching part, um, and then he can get his therapy, his treatments behind some of the competitive, you know, uh, parts of practice. How's that been, Marcy Ford's out here? Oh, it's great. You know, it's... Uh, a great opportunity for a guy, you know, we, we want to encourage our uh, alumni to be around. Um, and he had a 15-year career, so uh, a guy who's played for multiple teams, but, you know, he's had 
an opportunity to play here for quite some time. Um, obviously, him and Brad have a connection. They played together. Some of the coaching staff has been around him, and um, he can impart quite a bit to our young guys, to our bigs. So to have him around for, you know, as long as he wants to stay, I'm, I'm, I love it. So I think it'll be for at least a week, but uh, we're going to take full advantage of it while he's here.